15 here at beautiful Henry Ford College. Uh, it's Saturday, January 31st, 2015, and I'm joined by Micah. Hi, everybody. Uh, and we just wanted to fill you in on this great event that we're having today and, uh, and get an idea about the college and their use of Drupal. So uh, uh, tell us about uh, HFC. We are we're a really heavily Drupal shop. Um, we do a lot of stuff with um, web services, so we're tying together a bunch of our Drupal sites together, sharing data back and forth between them. Uh, that's probably one of the things that sets us apart in how we use Drupal. Um, but uh, we're using it for all our main websites and for also starting to work on internal stuff, portal type stuff. Uh, really enjoyed the uh, session, Wayne's session today on organic groups because we're getting heavily into that as part of our portal. So yeah, that's kind of how we use Drupal. As we've mentioned on previous podcasts, uh, anytime that Wayne Aker is talking about something, you want to be in that. Room. Oh yes, so. as, as, in fact, as you said on a previous episode, he just kind of exudes intelligence, and so you just have to be in the room with Wayne, and, and you're going to pick up yeah. some of that. It's, that's it's always as, a good thing. That's as opposed to the commercial progression folks. When we're talking, you're kind of just like. <laughs> uh, uh, so when you said uh, tying services together, do you yeah. have third-party non-Drupal services that you're building? We to? do. We, we, um, in fact, I did a uh, talk at Drupal Camp 2013. Uh, link in the show notes. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, but uh, we uh, we pull some data from our ERP system uh, into the Drupal database. Do custom entities with that. So we do a little bit of that. Um, but we've got a lot of back-end information, things about our courses, our programs, uh, even our news and events calendars. Those all live on back-end web servers, and then we use a uh, custom-built client that uses Guzzle to pull that stuff out and, and display it on our front-end websites. Okay, now that the 2013 is sounding familiar again, Guzzle is yeah. A... yeah, mine was the talk that put everybody to sleep in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was another one, but uh, we'll get into that. Uh, so how long have you been in the, in the Drupal game? Well, I've been working with Drupal since the 4.7 days. So you've got like a single digit uh, D.O. No, I have a five digit D.O. Uh, so uh, not quite, you know, not quite single digits, but uh, uh, 43,000 something. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but nice. uh, five digit Drupal user. So like I said, started building sites uh, around 4.7. Um, we started using Drupal here, probably Drupal five days. Okay. Um, and uh, right now we're really heavily invested in Drupal seven. Still trying to decide which way we're going to go with the amount of custom we've got. You know, we're looking at we're looking at backdrop as maybe being a thing. You know, I don't know, but uh, we're looking at Drupal eight. It would really work out well for some of what we've got too. So, really, at this point, we don't have to make a decision. So we're not going to make a decision and. Uh, we still got Drupal 6 sites we want to bring forward, so okay. let's get those taken care of first and then we'll worry about where we're going in the future. Now, you mentioned Backdrop, and we'll be getting back to that in a second. <laughs> uh, uh, is there anything in the contrib space that you've, uh, you've worked, that you've worked on? Um, a little bit. I've, I've, I've put in some patches on a couple of things. I've submitted some patches for LDAP. We use LDAP. Um, we use LDAP on all our sites. You know, we've got a uh, pretty well-established identity management system here. So we're using that. We're also using the NetIQ Access Manager in front of all of our websites. So we pretty much have single sign-on to Drupal by faking it. Um, the, what basically happens is, is Access Manager looks for the login form, and if it sees it on the sites that, that are expected to see it, it, it'll actually fill the user's credentials in for them so the users don't have to log in to each individual site as they navigate back and forth. Um, and so we use the LDAP a lot and have, have had to do some things with uh, the LDAP module to get the LDAP and OG working together so that we can get those populated. That gets a little crazy from time to time. Um, I've got a couple of contrib modules that I've thrown out there, you know, basically because, you know, little things I've used. I've got a little module called Quick Cache Cleaner that lets you just clear caches without having to have access to the performance page. Okay. It just calls the same thing so we can give that to users and say, yeah, you can clear the caches yourself. <laughs> And, uh, okay, if that didn't work, especially with the, the, the front end, back end web servers, you know, where they make a change on the back end web server, they must see it on the public page. It's not there yet. Okay, click hashes on both sites, and then, and then call me back if it doesn't work. What I found is uh, there's never been a problem in Drupal that can't be solved by cleaning. Yeah, you know, I Stuff should have been I should have been a plumber. You know, <laughs> the much time as I've spent flushing caches. <laughs> So well, very cool. So your, the LDAP changes had to do with uh, assigning roles or assigning groups based um, just, on just a couple of patches. Just you know, I 
I learned a long time ago that you know, getting involved in Drupal doesn't necessarily mean writing the big huge patches that make a lot of changes. You know, what helps make Drupal better is writing things that fix punctuation problems, you know, in help text. And so it'll be little things like that. Um, you know, a great a great lesson I learned and something that can be learned for anybody that's thinking about getting involved in the trip. My very first patch, I was terrified. I tested a, a patch that someone else had written, found a bug in it, reported that it had a bug, and said, I'm not comfortable fixing this. The maintainer came back and said, go for it. Mm -hmm. And so I sat down and I wrote a patch and I was terrified because if I write this patch wrong, it's going to break Drupal. <laughs> and I submitted the patch and a couple of lines of that patch ended up in the final patch somewhere else. <laughs> you know, but I learned a big thing. It's that go ahead and contribute. Go ahead and help in the issue queues. Go ahead and fix the things you can. And hopefully somebody else will keep you from committing something that was bad. <laughs> I'm going to uh, give two uh, Brad's contrib notes. The first note for you is uh, if you want to submit a patch, the format is uh, patch dash uh, long uh, random number dash uh, short random number dot <laughs> dot diff. So uh, well, you could put the issue number in there. Somewhere, I guess. You know? yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and the other note is uh, probably one of the least appreciated uh, overtly, but most appreciated uh, by people who don't realize it is the documentation team. Uh, and so if you have the uh, the wherewithal to, to contribute to writing good documentation. It's a thankless job, but it's oh, yeah. great. Oh yeah, big, big important thing, very important. So let's talk backdrop. Okay. Where are you standing on that right now? It looks interesting. Okay. Um, like I said, I've got a lot of custom code. It's all written around, um, you know, it's, it's all written around Drupal 7 API architecture. We'd have to learn something else. Um, I think they're flagging us down. I think they want us to wrap it up, but I'll just say this. For us, the biggest thing as far as which direction we end up going in the future is probably going to end up being going back to LDAP support. When I first looked at Drupal, we couldn't use it here at the college because it had no LDAP support. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as it had LDAP support, we started using it. We couldn't go to Drupal 7 until it had LDAP support. We can't go to Drupal 8 or Backdrop until it has some kind of LDAP support. In, That'll be a big deal for us. In contrib terms, uh, SSO modules are very important. I don't know what the uh, release frequency is going to be like yeah, for 8. Again, we're not doing real SSO here. We're doing fake SSO. Right. So that's not a problem. But the LDAP thing, I've actually been able to get in and do that. That's going to be handy for us. I think they want to get us to get everybody together to do a picture. Oh, OK. So I think we have to cut well, this short. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brad. Talk. And uh, thanks, guys, for the podcast. Oh, thank you for having us here at Drupal Cast. That's amazing.